All right, guys, and moving on into section 4.5 now. This is on a little French guy uh, named L'Hôpital and a rule that he came up with a long, long time ago. So L'Hôpital's rule... <clears throat> If you think of where we are uh, in the chapter right now, chapter four was all about applications of the derivative. Uh, and the weird thing about section 4.5, just this one, it's kind of a standalone idea that's not really related to what came before it or after it. What we're doing here in chapter uh, four, section five with L'Hopital's rule is kind of doing a little bit of a throwback thing. If you take a look at what's going on right here, we're going to be talking about limits in every problem that we are going to be doing today, which is something uh, in terms of uh, the actual uh, objective of a problem that we really haven't dealt with since chapter two. But one of the things that derivatives are useful for is evaluating something called L'Hopital's rule, which allows us to use derivatives in order to evaluate certain limits, not all limits, just certain limits, which is a little bit circuitous because, of course, we need limits in order to evaluate derivatives unless we're doing shortcuts, which we pretty much are here today. So normally you need limits to evaluate derivatives. But today with L'Hopital's rule, we're going to reverse that and use some derivatives in order to evaluate limits. So L'Hopital's rule, you'll notice here, is written in if-then form. And the if, the hypothesis, the thing that has to happen in order for this to work out, is that um, if f of c over g of c is equal to 0 over 0, or infinity over infinity. Now notice everybody, we are writing f and g of c, not of x. So these are not, pardon me, these are not general formulas out here. These are what happen uh, when we stick in a specific value here at which we're evaluating the limit. So remember, guys, that back in chapter two, the first thing we said you always wanted to try with every single limit problem is plug and chug. It doesn't often work, but if it does, A, it's the fastest route by far, B, it's usually the only route uh, in order to get the limit when it does work out. But 99% of the time, it didn't work. And in fact, most of the time that we did it, we ended up with a zero in both the numerator and the denominator. And of course, zero divided by zero is undefined. Once in a while, you'll end up with this goofy form here of infinity over infinity, which is also undefined. And in these two cases, L'Hopital's rule can help us. So here's what it says. It's a little bit confusing when you just read it out mathematically, but once we get the hang of it, you'll find this is one of the easier things that we're doing here in chapter four. So if we end up with zero over zero or infinity over infinity when attempting plug and chug, then L'Hopital's rule tells us that the original limit, the one we were uh, trying to evaluate at the beginning, beginning. The limit as x approaches c of one function divided by another function. That limit is equal to the limit as x approaches the same c value now of the quotient of the derivatives of both the numerator and the denominator. So what L'Hopital's rule says is that the limit of a quotient is equal to the limit of the quotient of their derivatives. So basically, if you try plug and chug and you end up with zero over zero or infinity over infinity, you can apply this trick right here by simply differentiating both the numerator and the denominator and taking the limit of that expression, which hopefully you're going to be able to evaluate and get something that is defined unlike the original expression where it was likely undefined. Okay, at this point, you might be saying, mm, I'm not sure I get it. Well, let's dive in. It's pretty easy to work with here. So let's take a look at the limit as x approaches 1 of the rational function x cubed minus 1 over x minus 1. Now, back in chapter 2, the first thing we said you should try is plug and chug. And sure enough, when you try that, you would end up with a 1 minus 1 on top, which is a 0, and on the bottom, a 1 minus 1, which is a 0 as well. So plug and chug doesn't work. And back in chapter two, what we would have done now is to try to factor the numerator and hopefully cancel out the factor of x minus one from the denominator with what we have on top. And this one would work, but it requires you to remember the formula here for factoring a difference of cubes, which I think you guys have probably forgotten. So L'Hopital's rule will work here for the reason that we ended up with zero over zero when we went to do an original substitution substitution. So L'Hopital's rule tells us that this limit, the one we're actually interested in, is identical now, come on, is identical to the limit, again, as x approaches 1, of the derivative of both the top 
and the bottom. So I want to be clear here, guys, we're not taking the derivative of this entire function. To do that would require the quotient rule, but L'Hopital's rule allows us to simply take the derivative of the numerator and the derivative of the denominator and deal just with those separately. So the derivative of just the top, the x cubed minus 1, is going to be a 3x squared. And of course, the minus 1 at the end has a derivative of 0. In the denominator, the derivative of x minus 1 is just 1. And now we can see that if we try to let x equal 1 at this point here, we have no problems whatsoever. That numerator is just going to become a 3, and 3 divided by 1 is 3. And there's our answer, everybody. Now again, to be clear, to do this back in chapter 2, we would have said, okay, that limit, you guys do not need to write this down right now, that is equal to the limit as x approaches 1 of, and it might have taken you some time to do this, but factoring that difference of cubes would have gotten you x minus 1 times, let's see here, an x squared that would have been a plus x and a plus 1, if I'm not mistaken, all over the x minus 1. That cancels with that, and now we plug the 1 into this expression here, and 1 plus 1 plus 1 gets us 3. So in no way, shape, or form are we saying that the old way in which we did it wouldn't work anymore, but L'Hopital's rule, which we use to get this answer right here, is a lot faster. Because one thing I hope we have learned by now, taking derivatives, especially of simple functions like, like relatively simple polynomials, is a pretty quick and easy thing to do. Um, and especially when you consider cases where it might be more difficult to factor than what we did right here, I think you can see how this method is going to be a lot faster than this method right here. Okay, so just to clarify, L'Hopital's rule worked because our original substitution got us 0 over 0. So we just took the derivative of both the top and the bottom, evaluated that, and came up with that answer of 3. Lickety split. Okay, let's do it again now. It doesn't just apply to polynomial functions. It can apply really in any function where your original substitution is going to get you either 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. So uh, let me go ahead and stick with green right here and let's see what happens. Try plug and chug first, always. But cosine of pi over 2, I believe, is 0. 0 squared is going to get us 0 on the top. Down on the bottom, the sine of pi over 2 is 1, but that 1 minus 1 gives us 0 as well. And this tells me that, yeah, Direct substitution doesn't work, but L'Hopital's rule will because we ended up with 0 over 0. So that limit there, everybody, is going to equal the limit as x approaches pi over 2 of, and here we go. We need to take the derivative of the numerator and the derivative of the denominator separately and then see what happens. Okay, so we've got a cosine squared of x on top, or probably better to think of it as cosine of x quantity squared. So its derivative is going to be a 2 times the same base, which is a cosine of x, times the derivative of that base. And the derivative of cosine of x is negative sine of x. So I'm going to put a sine of x right here, and we'll put that negative all the way out in front. Okay, gotcha. So that's the derivative of the top. And down on the bottom, the derivative of sine of x is just cosine of x, and that minus 1 just has a derivative of 0, so that's the derivative of the bottom. Now the nice thing that happens, I hope you see it, we have an identical factor of cosine of x on both the top and the bottom, and those factors cancel each other out. And now, I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure we can evaluate this. Sine of pi over 2, putting the pi over 2 in right here is 1, times a negative 2 is negative 2, divided by 1 is negative 2. And that should be our answer to this limit problem. Okay, if you're getting the impression like this isn't all that hard, you're probably right. 4.5 is not too bad of a section, guys. Let's move on and do another one. All right, limit as x approaches 0 just from the right here of x times the natural log of x. Well, the problem we have with this one here, guys, is that if we were to try direct substitution right off the bat, if we were to let x actually equal 0, I like to put that arrow there instead of an equals, we end up with a 0 multiplied by, and if you remember this here, guys, and I hope you do, the natural log of 0 is actually undefined. 
So this format that we have here isn't exactly the zero over zero or the infinity over infinity that I had talked about before, but this one kind of does uh, work out a little bit. Okay. All right. We do something a little bit strange with a problem like this. Because this is not written as a quotient, L'Hopital's rule as we know it doesn't really work out well. But I'm going to show you guys a little shortcut here. And this one seemed odd to me when I first saw it as well of taking it. Oh, blah, 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 of taking an expression like this and trying to make a quotient out of it. So if I can keep my hand off my screen, we'll be in good shape. All right, so a limit now as x approaches 0 from the right. Oh, and by the way, if that little plus after the 0 is bothering you at all on this problem, just remember it's something that has to be done, guys. You cannot take the limit of a negative, excuse me, you cannot take the natural log of a negative number. So it's impossible for x to be negative. x can only be positive for the domain of this original function, and that's why x can only approach 0 from the right and not from the left. Now, if memory serves, the trick that they did right here to make a fraction out of this, and I know this seems odd, is they left the natural log of x up in the numerator. And instead of multiplying that by x, what they do is divide it by 1 over x, which seems really counterintuitive. But let me just stop you for a second and make sure that everybody acknowledges here that, uh, can I change that color? I can. How about that? That this expression right here and this expression right here that we've changed it into are mathematically equivalent. Now, in almost every case, we would probably begin from this form and then go up this way here. Dividing by 1 over x is the same thing as multiplying by x. But this serves our purpose right now of being able to get this original expression written as a quotient. <clears throat> Excuse me. And now kind of what you see here is if we were to plug in zero on both the top and the bottom, we end up with undefined over undefined, which is another one of those indeterminate forms. So now we're going to go ahead and apply L'Hopital's rule. Now we'll say the limit as x approaches 0 from the right, and here we go. The derivative of natural log of x is just going to be 1 over x. And the derivative of 1 over x, well, if I think about that as x to the negative first power, that derivative is going to be negative 1 x to the negative second. So that's like a negative 1 over x squared. That's a mess. But now at this point, let me go ahead and undo the goofy thing that I did just a second ago. Instead of dividing by 1 over x squared, we could just multiply this by x squared over 1, and that should be negative there as well, sorry, and that takes care of that. So where are we now, guys? I think this will be our last line. The limit as x approaches 0 from the right, and we've got a 1 over x times an x squared over 1. That's just going to become an x, although there is a negative out in front of all that, but I don't think that's going to matter because we're taking a limit as x approaches 0, and we should just end up with 0 for our answer there. All right, all right. That's how that one shakes out. So once in a while, uh, your author seems to like problems like this, where the original expression is not written as a quotient. He likes to find interesting ways for you to have to make it into a quotient and then be able to figure out an answer from there. Okay, let's take a look at one like this. Limit as x approaches 0 of a more complicated quotient now. And boy, just a bunch going on. We've got an exponential term. We've got polynomial terms. And we have a trigonometric term. So the first thing we should probably think about is what happens when we try to do plug and chug. I do want to warn you guys, it is possible to over apply L'Hopital's rule into places where it does not fit. But if I plug a 0 in here for x, I get a 1 minus 0 minus 1 up all on the top. That's a 0. And down on the bottom, cosine of 0 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. So yep, 0 over 0 gives me the indeterminate form that actually I was kind of hoping to see. So this limit is now equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of, and let's take the derivative of what happens on top and on bottom. Derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. Derivative of a minus x is a minus 1. And the derivative of that minus 1 at the end of the numerator is just 0. Down on the bottom, derivative of cosine of x is negative sine of x. And the derivative of minus 1 is just 0 again. So that's our derivative. And at this point, everybody, we have always been able to go ahead and evaluate this new expression, in this case, e to the x minus 1 over negative sine of x, at this value of 0 and come up with our limit. So let's see what happens there. 
e to the 0 is 1. 1 minus 1 gets a 0 on the top. And down on the bottom, the sine of 0 is 0, whether or not there's a negative in front of that. So shoot, that didn't work. We ended up with 0 over 0 again. Well, if we want to evaluate this limit here, everybody, as x approaches 0, but direct substitution gets us 0 over 0, we're in no worse shape than we have been on the previous problems. We're going to go ahead and do L'Hopital's rule a second time. Once again, because we got 0 over 0, we can do this as many times as we need to, but I think just 1 is enough here. Limit as x approaches 0 of derivative of e to the x is e to the x, and that minus 1 just becomes a 0 when we differentiate. And down on the bottom, the derivative of negative sine of x is negative cosine of x. So what happens now when we let x actually become 0? Up in the numerator, e to the 0 power is 1, and down on the bottom, cosine of 0 is 1, the opposite of that is negative 1, and there's the answer we were looking for, everybody, of negative 1. So, once in a while, you might have to do L'Hopital's rule multiple times. You just keep going. As long as you get 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity each time you do it, you can keep doing that as many times as is necessary. And this one right here, the limit as x approaches 0 of the difference of two fractions now, 1 over sine of x minus 1 over x. Again, the format here looks a little bit different than what we're used to. Let's see what happens when we try to put uh, 0 directly in. Well, maybe not surprising, right away sine of 0 is 0, so we end up then with an undefined quantity minus, and 1 over 0 is another undefined quantity. And let me go ahead and tell you guys that this is not going to get you full credit to say that undefined minus undefined is zero because anything minus itself is zero. That is incorrect. Any real number minus itself is equal to zero, but that doesn't work with undefined quantities. So this is a spot that doesn't work out well, and it also doesn't look like what we've been talking about so far today because we haven't, eh, dang gummit, we haven't talked at all yet, you guys about what to do if we're taking a limit uh, with, with undefined terms being subtracted. So what I want to try to do is take a moment, kind of like we did uh, two examples ago uh, with that x natural log of x problem, and see if we just can't rewrite this thing as a single fraction. And I think you guys see where we're going with this. I would make a common denominator here of x sine of x. So I'd multiply the first one by x over x, and the second fraction by sine of x over sine of x. So what's that going to do for us? This is now going to become x minus the sine of x all over x times sine of x. So just a little bit of algebraic uh, manipulation here, and we can rewrite this thing as a single fraction. And now, if we were to try plug and chug, let's see what that does for us. When x becomes 0, the numerator is going to be 0 minus 0. Last I checked, that equals 0. And down on the bottom, 0 times 0 is 0 as well. So yeah, that's what I was kind of expecting to happen, frankly, kind of hoping to happen. Now that means that we can apply L'Hopital's rule to this expression. So the limit as x approaches 0 of, and here we go, derivative of x is 1, and the derivative of minus sine of x is minus cosine of x. Little bit more work is needed on the bottom. x times sine of x is a product. We need the product rule. First, which is x, times the derivative of the second factor, which is cosine of x, plus the second factor sine of x times the derivative of the first factor, which is just 1. So let's see what happens now when we let x actually equal 0. That cosine of 0 up in the, the second part of the numerator is going to be 1. Uh -huh, I think I see where this is going. And 1 minus 1 gets us 0. OK. Down on the bottom now, 0 times cosine of 0, that's 0 times 1, which is 0, plus the sine of 0, which is 0. Yep. That gets us 0 over 0 again. So that means that, unfortunately, everybody, we're going to have to do L'Hopital's rule a second time. So the limit as x approaches 0 of, and here we go. In the numerator, the derivative of that 1 is just a 0. The derivative of negative cosine of x is now going to become positive sine of x. 
Okay, so that's something. Down on the bottom, got to be careful. This first term of the denominator, x cosine of x, that requires the product rule. But don't forget about this term right here, which is just kind of freestanding. So first, let's do the derivative of the x cosine of x using the product rule. First factor is x. Derivative of the second is a negative sine of x. So I'll put a sine of x there and a negative out in front. Plus the second factor, which is cosine of x, times the derivative of the first, which is just 1. So, okay, that binomial, negative x sine of x plus cosine of x, represents the derivative of x cosine of x. And then we need to add to that the derivative of sine of x, which is just cosine of x. Now, certainly, if, if my directions were to just find a derivative and simplify, I would combine those two cosine of x terms into a 2 cosine of x. But for now, since we're looking for a numerical answer, and considering the fact that I don't have much space left, let's see what happens here, guys. I think I might just wing this one mentally. If we now were to let x actually become 0, here we go. Up in the numerator, sine of 0 is 0. Down in the bottom, let's see what's going on here, guys. We've got a negative x sine of x, so that's a negative 0 times sine of 0. Got it? That's a 0. Plus cosine of 0 is 1, plus another cosine of 0 is 1, and this will work, everybody. We did not get 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. We've got 0 over 2, so it looks like our answer here is just going to be 0. Okay, that's as much as I had for you guys from section 4.5. As I said, it's really not too bad. It's a nice calm before the storm of the next two sections we're going to do, which are 4.7 and 3.10. So enjoy it, everybody. Let's knock this one out quickly, and let's get ready for, uh, yeah, the fun that is coming here soon. Good luck, guys, and let me know if you have any questions on homework.